and marketing programs, which generated over 140 million in gross re revenues during 2011, up from 2 million in 2009. Before focusing solely on mobile solutions, Mr. Keene concurrently held responsibility for all branded web products that contributed more than $3 billion annually to IHG. Welcome, Bill. So just forward? Yeah, forward. All right, before I get started, uh, how many know who Intercontinental Hotels Group is? And they can name more than one brand, besides Intercontinental. OK, good. Because that's usually the hard part is people don't know who we are. So um, we are, again, like, like I said, uh, just said, we're one of the world's largest hotel uh, companies in the world. We have over 4,600 properties. So for those that are traditional retailers, that's like having 4,600 franchises because we are a franchiser. Um, before I get going, how many people are in sort of a big Fortune 500 or Fortune 1000 company? Okay. How many are in uh, agency side? Development, uh, core development, or solution providers? Okay. This helps me kind of set the stage for what we're talking about. But I, I'm going to come back to this franchiser model here, uh, kind of periodically through the, the presentation, because it does lend some complexity to what we're trying to do. So, what are we going to cover today? Uh, first is. Uh, it's kind of determining uh, what mobile maybe mean to your organization, right? And how we kind of do it. I'll kind of do a little bit of storytelling. Uh, a lot of people sometimes think they're coming to get a, a thesis, a doctoral, doctoral uh, thesis from me, but this is really just a book report because no one's really figured this out. But, uh, you know, go through some self discovery. Next is taking that and focusing your priorities, right? Uh, everyone has to do it because you're going to get hit by a gazillion vendors and a million people telling you exactly you need to be doing this. And the fact of the matter is you need to be doing a lot of things. It's just how do you determine those priorities. The third is connecting those experiences across, uh, across mobile, digital, and physical locations. And we'll tell you a little bit about what we've done and how we're attacking this problem. And then really the complexity of delivering that infrastructure and that service. And then last. We'll spend some time debunking mobile myths, although uh, I know this morning there were a few that were brought up. I'll, I'll reiterate those same things. So this will be my first gratuitous but last uh, sort of size of mobile slide. You won't see any more of this coming. But what does uh, mobile mean for today's uh, global consumer? Well, first, it's always tethered and it's always on. It truly is more than just a booking channel. It is something that's with our guests at every step of their experience with us. Seven billion people in the world, there's six billion cell phones, and there's one billion smart stuff devices. They're getting more and more powerful, um, and it lends the ability to do much more complex transactions. So what does mobile mean for Intercontinental Hotels Group? This is the first thing we had to ask ourselves, uh, same first thing you should be asking yourselves. And the first is, it's that connective tissue, like I said. I think a lot of people, when we see e-tail, we're thinking purchase. But mobile is more than that. Mobile is an experience tool. It's, again, it's a connective tissue with our guests that allows us to stay in a relationship with them all the way through checkout. Second, it is a new media type. Uh, it is a new marketing channel for us, one that we don't really have the disciplines in yet, but we're learning. Third, it's a skip technology. Um, uh, as you said, we've done, we do business in over 100, company, or 100 countries, I should say, uh, and a lot of places like China, where we are, uh, we've been there since before Nixon went back in in the 70s. Um, mobile is a lot of these guests' first experiences with us, meaning uh, if you go to a tier one city in China or a tier two city, they look a lot like Manhattan, right? It is what it is. But you start to get in tier three, tier four, tier five cities, there is no landline infrastructure. And so mobile is the first touch point that they have with us. Fourth, and this is really specific to us in the travel industry, although I think there is a you know, sort of a parallel in, in retail, um, but it's a differentiator versus OTAs. And in the travel industry, that stands for online travel agents. This is the likes of Expedia, Priceline. Uh, a lot of you may have used Hotel Tonight. These are people who take our inventory and distribute it through their service. Um, 
And the reason it's a differentiator is they can only take a booking. They cannot service our guests. So uh, the other thing that happens in our industry is a lot of these online travel agents, uh, sort of they don't really care as much about our brand. They only care about selling price and location. So what they tend to do is cannibalize our price points. So the other thing you have to ask yourself about what before you know, determining what uh, your next step you're going to take, you know, define what it means, but then also think about who in your organization has mobile initiatives moving on. So first is clearly distribution channels. That's where I come from. That's my background. Uh, we have digital and interactive marketing. You have the brand teams, as you heard Puma talking about before, doing a lot that the brand teams are doing with outside agencies. Information technology. You know, you talk to a lot of folks in their companies where their mobile initiatives are getting started. A lot of them are coming up out of, you know, pretty, pretty savvy and intelligent developers. Regional operations. Uh, for us, this is our call centers. Um, this is our regional operating companies who do specific uh, management of our hotels and our franchisers and run our in-hotel technology. These are all disparate pillars in our organization. And then lastly is our own enterprise side. So again, uh, folks that are working with the carriers and with uh, reporting solutions internally. So if you ask them, they're all going to tell you a different story of what mobile means, right? You know, depending on where you sit in the organization. So the key becomes, how do you sort of create that experience and cross blend all of those things? Um, and it's really, really quite complex. Uh, for us, we have to look at our guest journey. And so we kind of have a journey map that we've created, you know, really around searching and shopping and comparing booking, pre-stay planning, property arrival, and stay management. Those are all things that our guests think about. It's a typical pattern that you get into. And mobile can surround that guest experience and really enhance it. But it gets really complex in the global marketplace where you've got sort of multi-dimensional. You've got these customer segments. You've got key markets. Uh, and then in particular countries, the infrastructure of those countries are unique to them. We do a lot of business, like I said, in, in uh, the uh, you know, Middle East and in uh, Asia Pacific Rim where you have to deal with the carriers in a different way than you would in Europe and in, in the US. So you've got to tie those together. It's a really complex puzzle. So you ask yourself, what does it mean to your organization? You ask who else is working on this to try to galvanize around them. But then you start to create context for where should we focus first. So we took our guest experience and we kind of overlaid it on a traditional map of you know, what's most important uh, for the guest and what is, creates competitive advantage uh, for us. So if you look at that sort of five-step model, really consumers don't really value that much the search, shop, and compare experience for us, or the booking flow. What they care about is their stay experience. That's the, our product is the physical stay at the hotel, right? So buying it isn't the exciting part. It's consuming it, which is really when you're in, inside the walls of our hotels. Uh, the one place that it does become extremely important, mobile becomes extremely important to guests in that booking flow, is when they're distressed. You've had the crappiest day of your life. Weather has stopped your, your uh, travel pattern, and you need a place tonight. And that's really where we've just really harvested that traffic. We've, uh, I'll show you some revenue statistics here in a minute. But really, that's where we've honed in on early, in the early stages here. But truly winning will be up in the upper right quadrant, and that's where we need to invest for the future. So looking at our journey map, you know, we go back maybe three years ago, four years ago, uh, we were running, I was running the desktop brand sites um, and we were dabbling in mobile on the side. So we said, you know, let's take this map and let's lay it out and look at those need states and see where we could start to go fast and go quick. So really what we did is the search shop compare and booking phase of our flow was the easiest thing for us to do. Because we already, like most of you in the room, had an e-commerce infrastructure that we could sort of just migrate over into the mobile form factor, right? And then where it was really difficult for us was when we have to tap in to a hotel like this. I mean, 
this hotel is amazing. And I, I, you know, I do always want to compliment the competition, but um, it, this is impressive. But you think about all the things that it takes to run this hotel. It's incredibly, incredibly complex. So what we started to do in those areas is let's not tackle that from scale. Let's pilot and prototype in those areas. So in that first phase of scaling fast, right, we had three key pillars that we focused on. We wanted to mobilize our marketing. Remember I said it was a new media touch point for us. The second thing we want to do is expand our booking capabilities. Um, so again, optimize them for the mobile form factor. And then fourth, we wanted to assist the guests in their journey. And what you'll see is this sort of manifest more <laughs> content plays than truly functional plays. So take a little bit back, and this is sort of looking backwards over the last probably three to four years. Um, we've mobilized our marketing. You know, we, we always had a, a strength in search. Uh, I think most uh, companies in the travel industry are highly dependent on search. So we had that skill set in-house on desktop. We had some very uh, intuitive and, and career-minded uh, search managers who kind of pivoted over into mobile search. Um, we certainly then went about mobilizing all of our owned media touch points, um, you know, whether that be building out templates, uh, whether that be uh, purchasing uh, or uh, you know, mobilizing all of our existing campaigns that we send to our guests and making them mobile uh, optimized. Third, we started to do purchase media. So you'll see, we've started to work with a lot of the ad networks that are out there. Uh, you know, learning that maybe some old models of CPM work better than CPC or CPA, right? You know, so you, know, you have to get some folks in your company just to pivot slightly and rethink uh, is where we did here. And then we're evolving our offline marketing. Again, we are a franchiser. It's not about print collateral. It's about deploying the print collateral. It's about uh, deploying into our hotels when they're all independent business owners. So what do we, you know, kind of in these different areas of purchase media, what we've, we most focused on is really what we call addressing context. And that is location and points of disruption. For us, we get the majority of our revenue uh, right now uh, when someone has to book at the last minute. Right? So where are those points? Airports, train stations. Uh, and we've ring-fenced and worked with a lot of the media providers and a lot of the location-aware uh, um, networks to really ring-fence those areas where we can capture that customer at the right point of context. Um, we've integrated social where we can. I'm not necessarily, we can have a drink over uh, this, but I'm not necessarily the social, social guy. I get it, but I don't get it at the same time. Um, but we have integrated the social graph at certain points where, you know, we'll do installed apps of like Facebook and then ask for permissions to post to walls, to mine the data. Um, and so we've done integrated some social aspects. I, I, I show this one because I, I like it. It's kind of interesting uh, of the reach that we got off this particular campaign. Um, where we ask for permissions for enrollment in a quarterly promotion. We ask for permissions when they installed the app via Facebook login, and then we posted to their walls. Uh, and so the Facebook developer toolkit is pretty, pretty slick in the way it tells you, okay, here's how many people that you know, saw the ad uh, in, their, in the person's personal stream, and how many clicked through to, on through it to take the action. Hard part is deploying the analytics into the Facebook stream is a little bit tougher, but you know, still, you get extra reach. So I get that part of it. The whole part of just checking in to check in sometimes uh, I don't get. Um, the next thing, so we mobilized our marketing. Second point is mobilize our booking channels, right? So we've created mobile websites, um, you know, in seven languages and across eight of our brands. Uh, we've got iPhone apps for eight of our brands. We've done Android, and yes, we still have BlackBerry, although we're in the process of pulling that down as BlackBerry 10 comes out. Uh, still not worth the investment for us right now. Um, we've also optimized for tablet. Um, so we've done native experiences uh, for an iPad booking app. I know Josh mentioned this morning uh, doing some slight CSS changes uh, for uh, desktop web and we're doing that. I'll be very interested to hear about the uh, responsive design panel this afternoon. We're looking at it. I'm not completely sold on it, but 
uh, we look at that, but we have built a native application. And then we were the first major uh, hotel company to do Windows Phone 7. So in the industry, we we're known as the first sucker. Uh, so, um, but I actually like what Microsoft's trying to do here uh, with design patterns and, and pivots and pans. I'm kind of enamored with the Metro style, but we've also done a Windows 8 desktop application. So, and then the last piece is we've localized. Um, you can't assume all booking flows are the same. Um, not even by operating system, you've got to look at country and region. So like I had said earlier, 38% of China is mobile only. So we've built optimized booking flows for China. And then we've also gone into uh, Japan. Has anyone done business in Japan? Raise your hand. Um, I, I got to tell a story. Does anyone know what Galapagos means? Other than the Darwin theory. So I'm at a meeting, got my earphones in, and they keep talking about Galapagos. And I'm sitting there going, I, is that a new operating system? Is that something that Google came up with with the new iOS, our new OS? And what they meant was their phones were highly, highly advanced, but they only worked in Japan. So they called them Galapagos, which I thought was an interesting story, but you're starting to see even Japan open up and adopt more uh, broader operating system adoption as uh, Apple goes in and partners with SoftBank, and Android has been going in and uh, partnering with Tacoma. So, the la and then part of this mobilize our booking is we've implemented what we call the list listening tools and other engagement points. So, again, things where we're asking for feedback within our apps. Um, you know, typically we're asking our guests about the booking experience, and about 50% of the time they're giving us something about their hotel stay which again is a learning uh, into itself. You know, we're doing things where we assist guests as they travel. So we'll do integrated maps, click to call the front desk, you know, the simple kind of things to help assist them as they travel, right? So how's that help, uh, helped us out? So um, I show this slide internally, usually just because I'm asking for funding and uh, uh, so it's a good sales point for us. But I always hearken back the, the iPhone's introduction to the introduction of the Netscape Mosaic browser, which was, you know, the internet had been around since the 60s, right? But it really wasn't until the Mosaic browser came out in 94 that really today's modern commerce took off, right? Um, same thing with Apple's iPhone. There's always been, you know, semi-smart devices out there. But really, it was Apple's introduction of the iPhone in 07 that really led. So I always thought, I said, look, our revenues are growing 10 times faster uh, on mobile than they ever did on desktop. And I know speeds and network speeds have gotten faster over time that have enabled that, but so are mobile networks, especially as they go into the long-term evolution of these things. And the key part I want to say about this is mobile engages where other channels can't. I mentioned earlier that we get ma majority of our bookings on mobile same day. That's typically not, you're gonna think about the context of where the consumer is. They're probably at an airport. They're not gonna sit down and boot up their laptop. You know, they're not gonna do those things. So that mobile device, if we weren't there, we couldn't be taking advantage of this, this sort of latent demand that we've got of people that are in a very distressed state. So it truly is incrementality in a lot of ways. So that was the last three years and four years in summary right there. Mobilize your marketing, you know, expand your booking capabilities, and then you know, think and assist guests uh, as they start to travel. But now we're getting into this new connected experience phase. Uh, and this is where this is gonna be a little bit tougher for all of us in the room, I believe. Because um, a shift in mindsets is gonna be necessary. Um, you know, our current focus to this point has been on bookings revenue, right? What can we do in transactions? And now what we need to invest in is post-book experiences, you know, things inside this hotel. You know, as I mentioned, we were harvesting latent demand, you know, meaning people that were in a distressed state uh, would book with us if we just made it optimized for the device. But now what we need to start to think about is how do we do actual demand generation through mobile, right? Third is we were working on less like travel management, you know, maps, click the call the front desk, you know, get my itinerary information. But now what we need to do is property integration. I want to check in. You know, I want to get my room key. You know, I want to, where's the shuttle, right? How do I pick it up? 
those kinds of things where you're functionally integrating into a property. And then last is we've kind of been in this sort of targeting and, and content serving uh, realm, right? And what we needed to move into is more CRM, right? That mobile device is one of many screens that they're going to be using. So now we've got to start to figure out this, this complex puzzle of I'm using different screens based on the different stages of where I am in my, my travel journey. And then this is a big one. I've heard it kind of sort of weaved into most of the presentations this morning is content curation, where we've taken stuff we've done on desktop and we've just sort of optimized it and changed it and tweaked it and made it mobile ready. But really we need to start thinking about is creating content unique for a mobile device that's in context of how they're using it, not force wedging an old e-commerce uh, content mentality into the flow. So, you know, so we have to start applying these lenses of real practicality, right? And so for us, the most important thing is orientation. You know, the guest is asking, where am I? Where's the hotel? Where's the shuttle? What exit do I take? You know, when will I get there? You know, 60% of our Holiday Inn uh, guests arrive by car. So they, they're actually going at a certain speed. We can now tell them, because the device, device tells us how fast they're going. You know, where's the hotel and how fast will I get there, right? We can start to optimize around these experiences. Third is celebration, right? You know, what are things around me that I can do? Um, you know, how do I show off that my life is better than yours? That's my definition of social, but... Uh, uh, and then there's acclimation, you know. Can I check in early? Which rooms are available? Can I get my key? Can I schedule services such as food and beverage? Turn down. You know, how do I control the ambient experiences in my room, whether that be lighting, curtains, television? So, and then types of content, right? So um, we, we've started to look and create content that's unique to that experience. Some of it's on-brand content, not, not syndicated, but real and authentic content. Because that's what they're expecting as they start to travel to the property. Yeah, they, if, if they want to go get restaurants, they can get that from Yelp. But I want to know specific things that I can do at your property or that you recommend, right? Second type of content is we are looking at monetizing partners, but in context. So um, not all content is germane. Just because I can doesn't mean we should, meaning force wedge, credit card, you know, every, every hotel company cross sells you their loyalty credit card, right? I, I've told our partner guys, we're not doing that because it's not in context of how they're looking at it, right? But we have a Hertz relationship. I need a car when I travel. Um, we've got some PCR dine, uh, Priority Club Rewards is our rewards program. I'm not sure I mentioned that, but we've got some dining programs within our Priority Club program that's directly in relation to my um, relationship with your brand. Those kinds of things will do. But just throwing, you know, everybody says, all these content providers come out and say, well, we've got the best restaurant list in all of Palm Springs. Well, that's great. Put it in your app. Um, so here's an example of the way we've created a branded experience. Um, one of our brands is Intercontinental. It's our upscale luxury brand. Um, and its brand positioning is in the know. That if you stay at one of our properties, you'll have an in the know experience. Uh, and the personification of in the know is actually our concierge, if you think about it, right? If you really want to know what's local, you're going to go to that concierge, and they're going to give you all the little inside tips and scoops. So what we've done is we've created um, an in, in the know experience using tablet that you can come and download it, and you're going to get the concierge's recommendation on where to shop, where to dine, where to eat. And not only that, they'll take you on a video walking tour of that city. So again, creating on-brand content, not syndicating someone else's, but make it real and authentic. The other thing is creating these brand experiences, start to do things that are about, okay, once I get there, are there any special deals? So um, we've, we've done, start to do location-based offers when you're inside our hotels, when they're ring-fenced in and around the product. The product is the hotel. Um, we've done other branded content with a Hotel Indigo brand, which is one of our boutique hotels. Um, and then we've done, like I said, loyalty point tie-ins, where I can, you know, uh, earn points by dining at certain restaurants. Again, I'm not just promoting restaurants, I'm promoting restaurants that 
pay us back for, uh, with loyalty points to our guests. And then the last piece I'll go into, just hold on a second, Alex, I'm gonna do a little setup for this, is, you know, we, I heard a lot of people, especially the guys from Puma, um, some of the other ones were, how do you galvanize all these different groups now around this idea of we're gonna create connected experiences? Uh, and one of the things that we've done to help as we get out of just pure booking and marketing and into hotel experiences and not just content plays, where we're gonna be tapping into functional services, we had to create a story. So what we've done is we worked with one of our brands, uh, Crown Plaza brand, which uh, focuses on uh, a persona that's sort of a, a self-sufficient business traveler, which I think most of us in the room probably are. Um, we're not the high touch, high need uh, of an intercontinental, but I'm very self-sufficient, but I'm here on business and I'm all about being productive. So we worked with the brand teams to create a narrative around this, this uh, a persona of this guy called Nate. And we worked to weave a mobile only story through all of their brand hallmarks and looking at that complete guest journey wheel. Um, so Alex, if you can go ahead and, and cue that up. Tomorrow I have a meeting in Midtown Manhattan. The only problem is I live in Chicago. As a partner in a digital marketing firm with clients around the country, this happens a lot, so I'm prepared. I have my travel Swiss Army knife on hand, also known as my Crown Plaza. As I'm waiting for the barista to make my latte, I reserve a room and, come to think of it, a conference room too. By the time my coffee is done, I'm set. <laughs> When the plane lands, I switch on my phone. Thanks to my app, I can see that the shuttle is nine minutes away. I've done this a thousand times before, and so I know that if I move it, I can make it. Good evening, Mr. Smith. How is your flight? Once I'm on the shuttle, I can check in and select the type of room I'd like. Quiet floor? Check. How about some food? Why, yes. Based on my profile, I get a few healthy options. Salmon sounds good, even at this hour. As I enter the hotel lobby, my app prompts me to skip the front desk and grab my key from the nearby kiosk. Up in my room, there's a knock. The waiters brought up my food and a little surprise, a complimentary craft brewed beer as a local extra, just for being a priority club member. I have a quick call with my wife and say goodnight, and then I hit my computer. As I'm getting ready for bed, I set my sleep advantage alarm. I choose my soundtrack and I'm down for the count. It's been another long day. In the morning, rather than head to the hotel gym, I decided to go for a run. I pick a loop around Central Park from the routes offered on my app. For one brief, glorious moment, I feel like a New Yorker. Back at the hotel, I'm offered a towel and some water. On the way back up to my room, breakfast. Some fresh squeezed OJ and a yogurt. It's fast to pay with my app. After a quick shower, I print my presentation wirelessly and head to the lobby to pick it up from Hal. He's my lobby host who I can go to with any type of question. I'm in a little bit of a rush, so Hal directs me to my meeting. After a day of meetings, I get a ping. Wow. A free drink at the bar, and a few minutes alone to catch up before a dinner with clients. Before leaving my room, I review my folio, check out, and email myself a receipt for easy filing. It looks like I have enough points for a weekend away. Hmm, the traveling is this easy. The only thing I need to think about is where to. Thanks, Alex. So again, creating the narrative allowed us to walk into all those different departments that are involved in service delivery in our company, right? And they could understand the context of why I was showing up and my team was showing up. But what you'll start, you'll start to realize is we need that narrative to rally around because the ecosystems in our company aren't, aren't interconnected. Meaning the things that run the food and beverage system in this hotel, the things that run your physical check-in and room assignment, um, aren't necessarily connected to our central reservation system 
we're, we work off probably what a lot of folks work off in this uh, in e-tail is a hub and spoke model, right? So distribution and booking was never kept with where the physical property, physical product delivery was held, right? So um, it's just complicated. Channels and central reservation and property management don't talk. Marketing and CRM pl platforms don't talk to point of sale. Uh, communications, comms engines don't talk to a retail and hotel operations communication. And then content repositories are spread out and not necessarily accessible by our contact centers. So again, complex, but you have to create the narrative. So we're doing a lot of program trial and effort. These are all solutions that we've uh, uh, either piloted or prototyped. But as you know, we're a franchiser, so we're about scale. So these are solutions we haven't scaled yet, but that should be part of the process is prototype and pilot, then scale. Um, oops. So I kind of fast forward, double click the button. But um, just in closing, I'm gonna give you kind of three things to look at uh, when it relates to mobile. And this kind of ties back, I think, to some of the things the earlier speakers said is, for us, distressed traveler equals distressed inventory, not true. Uh, meaning there's a big trend in the travel industry that last minute means huge discount, probably because Priceline put that model in your mind, but um, we're seeing revenue per sale in line with all of our other channels, right? It shouldn't be about uh, discounting. In fact, people in our industry are looking for brands at last minute. A hotel is a safe haven, right? How many times have you had a stressful day, but then you arrive at a hotel, a brand you know, and you just, you relax. So for us, we're not discounting. In fact, we're looking at Lanyap, not Lopoff. So how many Cajuns are in the room? Right? Oh, yeah. So Lanyap is a Cajun term that means a little something extra. Not, you know, you know, not a discount, but let me give you a baker's dozen. Let me give you that 13th bagel. You know, let me add a little, Lanyap is actually the spice that they put in the gumbo, make it a little bit better. So what you should think about mobile is not discount, but what value can you add at the last minute? Second, all traffic is booking traffic. I heard a lot of questions this morning around conversion rates and things like that. That's important, believe me, it's important. But two times as many users log into our websites and our apps to look at a current reservation than actually make a booking. What they're doing is they're in transit. They're trying to manage their stay, right? So again, not all that traffic has booking intent. In fact, it has service intent. You know, helping the guests through that stay is, is just as important. And then lastly, this was the major theme in the, the keynotes run, but tablet equals mobile, no. So if I look at our same day bookings, uh, mobile is about 48% same day. Tablet, 17, desktop, 11. So what does tablet look more like? Looks more like a desktop booking experience, right? Couch commerce, 80% of our guests that are booking on tablet are coming off of a Wi-Fi, right? not off a carrier network. So they're actually the opposite of mobile. They're in fact quite sedentary. They're sitting on their couch. Um, and then content consumption. They're voracious consumers of content, right? Our average session length um, of over five minutes, 23% on tablet, only 11 on mobile. So it says that they're spending long session times and they're consuming uh, lots and lots of, uh, of content. So I'm gonna skip through these real quick. You know. Make sure you apply new inventory models to mobile. Don't just replicate your desktop. Uh, intent is different. Uh, and then form factors and use patterns uh, are an indication of the state of the consumer. What device they're on tells you a lot about their context. So just in closing, develop a definition you know, of, your, of what mobile means to your company, to your different departments, uh, and to your consumers. Focus your efforts, both short-term and long-term. You know, tell the whole story, but say, this is what we're doing now, and that's something we're going to tackle on the roadmap in a year, in two years. Identify what's ownable, you know, what's unique about your brand that you can own. Don't copy everyone else. And then remember, um, the genius of Edison you know, wasn't the light bulb. It was actually designing the grid for New York City and wiring it, and that's our mentality. You get a lot of people that say, I can do this little widget, but that's not what the business we're in. We're in the business of franchising. We've got to make this work across 4,500 hotels, 4,600 hotels. So ours is how do we you know, experiment, but we always think with scale in mind. So that's kind of the closing. And now just questions. 
we have time for one question. <laughs> There's a question for Bill. Okay. Hi. Um, one of the things that you mentioned uh, with iPad usage that 80% of people were on Wi-Fi as opposed to on a carrier. How do you know that? Um, our analytics package can tell you, most analytics packages can tell you the network that they're coming off of. So we use Omniture. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Lauren.